Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Everybody having a good Sunday morning? Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, good to see you here. Some of them, I guess, maybe traveling, some of them not. Um, I have announced to me we have a birthday here. Yes, we do. <laughs> well, George's birthday was on Monday, right? Monday? He was, he turned uh, 16, no, just kidding. <laughs> he turned uh, 86. 86. 17. In his mind, he's 17. <laughs> yeah, so uh, his birthday was on Monday, and then uh, I got invited, but I got invited a little bit late, so I couldn't make it. So I think it'd be great if we sing happy birthday to him. Good? Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear George. Happy birthday to you. Yay! Happy birthday. <laughs> and then I have a um, couple other announcements to make it here. So as you know, we don't have a pianist here today, which more, li more li most likely we are not going to have a pianist. She's, uh, she has other church. She has her own actually other church she goes to. But the, the reason that she was here before doing it because they weren't doing the choir. But now the, the choir started, so she has to be there by 10. So then we're not going to have a pianist. So if you know around you, neighbor or anybody who can play piano or the guitar, anything like that, please recruit them. <laughs> Whatever you have to do, if you have to take them out for lunch or dinner, that you do that and then please recruit them. Mm -hmm. And because uh, we really need the uh, uh, musicians desperately here. Yes, please. I have an accordion. Okay, I'll take that, but no jingle bell. <laughs> uh, uh, so, like I said, so we need the uh, musicians really bad here. And also the uh, John, the drummer, He's not here because he's supposed to be, you know, he's a USS Lincoln, and I'm not sure if you guys have heard the news that uh, one of the helicopters got crashed and the five people died, right? That's on the, from the USS Lincoln, which is he's on the ship. So they're supposed to come back on Thursday, but they're still out there because they're still finding and all that stuff. So we don't know when he's going to come back. So that's the, the deal here. So please keep them in their prayer. It's, it's just bad between Afghanistan and this, we're losing so many servicemen and women, it's just so sad. So that's the, you know, announcement here, so. But we have, we're here, but the God is still in control, and we have hope. Amen. So, so we're gonna sing, uh, Wesley and I, we're gonna sing it together. <laughs> okay. One, two, one, two, three, four. Lord, you are good in your mercy endure it forever. Everybody see it. Lord, you are good in your mercy endure it forever. People from every nation and tongue, from generation to generation, we were. Thank you. 
I know who holds tomorrow.
you, musicians. Thank you, Gia, Wesley. Thank you, uh, Rick and Carol. Who else? Thank you for singing. Appreciated it very much. Amen. Good to hear you. Good to see everybody here. I'm glad I came. Gee, it's, it's wonderful. <laughs> huh? Who? What's that? Turn on the mic. Get him a hearing aid. Yeah, all right, I got it all now. Good to see you guys here, ladies. Gosh sakes, I'm glad to see everybody here today. I'm glad I came. Did you get that one? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Good. All right. Thanks, Wesley. Thanks, Rick. Thanks, Carol. Thanks, Gia. Thanks, Don, for bringing Carol. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Okay. I'm all ready to give you a sermon. I want to call your attention to the bulletin, the blue page, because I want to read this this morning by an unknown author, and since we're going to be pretty soon commemorating the anniversary of September the 11th, let me read this to you. You can open your bulletin and follow along. I know you could read it, but uh, I want to make sure you, read it, you heard it read. On September the 10th, 20 years ago, or September, yeah, September the 10th now, 20 years ago, 246 people went to sleep in preparation for their morning flights. 2,606 people went to sleep in preparation for work in the morning. 343 firefighters went to sleep in preparation for their morning shift. 60 police officers went to sleep in preparation for morning patrol. Eight paramedics went to sleep in preparation for the morning shift. None of them saw past 10 a.m. September the 11th, 2001. In one single moment, life may never be the same. As you live and enjoy the breaths you take today and tonight, before you go to sleep in preparation for your life tomorrow, kiss the ones you love, snuggle a little tighter, and never take one second of your life for granted. I thought that was very inspiring to me. And uh, on the back of your bulletin, you'll see another activity that's going on in our church. September the 14th, there will be a barbecue for veterans between 1,000 hours to 1,400 hours. And if you're not a veteran and you're a civilian, you know what that means? Ask a veteran. 1,000 hours to 1,400 hours. Others may attend and meet and thank them for their service. The ones that are hosting that is Pete Bono and Pat Bromley and I think your wife, Pete, right? Cynthia has been doing the cooking or the barbecuing or whatever they're going to do over there. They're going to eat, though. Where's it going to be? Right out here in the parking lot. All right. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Are we all ready? How's everybody doing this morning? No complaints? No. You got a complaint? What's your problem? Got a problem? Don't, don't bring it here. <laughs> Okay. All right. I want to read this scripture first. John chapter 5, verse 6. My title of my sermon is a good question. Okay. When Jesus saw him lying there and knew that he had already been there a long time, he said to him, do you want to be healed? Well, on an occasion, and and. I've preached on the parables of Jesus and I thought I would write a parable. And I'm going to read this parable to you that I wrote. I might even publish it amongst parables. 
On an occasion, a man had a question for his fiance. You know, the, the, the spell checker checked it into finance. <laughs> I don't know if there's a question between a fiance and finance or not, but I had to go back and ask not right. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Huh? That's true. <laughs> fiance, they were attending a university and they were good friends of mine. Now the question he asked her one evening was, will you marry me? And of course she said, yes, she would. After they were married for some time, other questions arose in his mind as he began to observe and experience her behavior. <laughs> this is a parable, George. <laughs> At least that's what I'm calling it. Oh my. Okay. And, and, and as he thought about those questions, he came to the conclusion that his new wife was in need of some healing from some of her behavior. Now by healing, he meant she needed to make some changes in some definite specific behavior. Did you know what he did? He said, therefore, <laughs> see that goes in the parable, therefore he said about, get this, the art of healing her behavior. <laughs> the parable continues. He decided to be very honest with her. Matter of fact, that is what he was advised to do. Be honest. This resulted in the following situations. It is Oh. He got hit with a frying pan, and it says, uh, let me see if I can read that for you. It says, I admit I didn't handle that well, said the wife, but I don't want this to discourage you from being honest with me in the future. <laughs> and then, here's where he found himself. <laughs> Ladies, this man would like some suggestions. <laughs> wear, a big, wear a helmet. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, uh, my professor in homiletics in the seminary, I almost said cemetery, in the, in the seminary said, you need to get the attention of your audience before you start popping off. <laughs> so, wasn't that a place, uh, was that dealing with a good question? It's a good question, will you marry me? Yes. It's yes. a good question, isn't it? Yes. In the gospel written by John, Jesus heals a man. And uh, this, he, this man suffered probably for some uh, inability to get up and walk. I, I looked that word up, and uh, it means weakness, frailty, for the want of strength, an illness, some kind of suffering. Maybe he did suffer a calamity of some kind. We do not know exactly, but the man may have been unable to walk, and evidently he was unable to walk. He'd been in that condition, according to the scriptures, for 38 years. So, perhaps he came to the pool, the pool of Bethesda. And uh, he, he came to that pool maybe often, because it was known for its healing process. 
And what would happen is it was a hot spring, although they thought an angel came down and caused it to start boiling up. And when it boiled up, everybody would make way and run down into, pool, into the pool of Bethesda. My wife and I visited that pool when we toured Israel way back in 1970-something or other, and uh, it didn't have any water in it. It was excavated, there's columns there, and you know, steps where you could go down into the pool. And so you can imagine this man sitting at the steps and he's trying to make his way down to the pool. And he's unable to do that. And uh, when, when that would start bubbling up, everybody would immediately run to get into the pool of water and experience that bubbling up. You know, it's sort of like the modern day, what do you call them? Saponas, swiners, whatever. They're. What do you call that? Swana, sauna, sauna? Sa oh, sauna. Yes. <laughs> Get my accent gets mixed up in that. Anyway, so they would immediately run and enter in when it started to uh, bubble up. And this poor chap didn't have enough energy to get to it. And he was probably pushed aside, ignored, and uh, trampled on by people who were trying to make their way right down to that pool of water, and he wasn't able to get there. Evidently, he was ignored. Can we relate to him? You ever been ignored? We may have a problem, a physical problem, maybe an emotional problem, maybe a mental problem, maybe a spiritual problem. Maybe we've got something going on with us that is not very appealing to other people and they can't stand to be around us until we're left alone to ourselves. Seems like no one cares to help. Maybe they don't know how to help. Maybe they don't know what to do to help, but the injured person feels uh, no one cares. What about an individual? Now, I, I don't mean to press this too far, okay? Because Jesus did say we need to be wise as a serpent, okay? And harmless as a dove. What, what about someone, an individual, on the side of the road holding up a sign, I need help, I need help. What do we say to ourselves? More than that, what do we feel about that person? Evidently, he must be hurting. Should we give money? I don't know. I remember one time out by uh, the mall over here, uh, there was a man standing there and he looked like he was really sad and he needed to, he said, I need some money. And so I carried around what I call my homeless dollar bill and I gave it to him, wished him well. Next day I came by the same place and he was trying to hold up a sign, but he was so out of it, high on whatever it was, maybe alcohol or something, but he, that man wasn't doing too good, so I drove past. And this is what I did. I prayed for it. Prayed for it. I'm not suggesting when you see somebody like that on the side of the road, you give them money. But I am suggesting you give them a prayer. This reminds me of Simon Peter in Acts 3, verse 6, when he said to the man who was needing help, and, and Peter said to him, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I thee. Then he said to the lame man, rise up and walk. Peter took him by the hand, lifted him up, and immediately received strength and stood up and walked praising God. Silver and gold have I none to give, but I can sure give a prayer. It's not money they may need, Although maybe, but more than money, they need a prayer for strength of mind, body, and spirit. And why not offer that prayer to God 
on their behalf as you pass by the injured soul, realizing that somebody's son or somebody's daughter, but by the grace of God, go I. Well, enough of digging. <laughs> Notice Jesus saw him in verse 5. Said, and that word means Jesus really looked upon him and he actually experienced in himself the pain that the man was feeling. He discerned what he saw. It wasn't simple glance. He really noticed the lame man in his condition. And Jesus had perceived that he was hurting and hurting badly. Every time he tried to make it down into the pool, he couldn't because of the other people getting in the way. And Jesus didn't ignore the man in his condition. Jesus had learned that he had been there for some time. Well, the scripture says 38 years he was lame. And uh, when he saw the man in that condition, it made an impression on him, Jesus. <clears throat> and this makes an impression on us, or ought to. Sometimes we may think or feel that God ignores us in our condition. He does not. As with the lame person, Jesus noticed how others were ignoring him and probably trampling all over him to get to the place where they could be healed. Actually getting in the way. So Jesus became very concerned about him. He knows what we are dealing with in this life. He is aware of it. Well, he made inquiries about this man's position or situation and found out this poor guy had been lame for a long, long time. And it was then that he had enough of compassion on the man that Jesus asked the question, do you want to get well? Good question, isn't it? Of course he wanted to get well. He tried to get down there to get into the pool of water when it began to boil up. But people just ran past him. He couldn't get there. But the question was, and it's a good one. Isn't it true sometimes, <clears throat> like with us, our situation, whether it's physical illness, whether it's a mental condition, whether it's an emotional one, whether it's a spiritual one we're struggling with, Put it in the realm of making changes in our attitude and our behavior. We use excuses not to change. I've always been this way. You don't know the parents that I had and what they did to me. You don't know what went on in my lifetime in the past and what I've had to experience over and over again. You don't know how I was mistreated. You don't know. You don't know. No, I don't know. But I know myself. I know that old Henry Peters has got more reasons not to change my attitude and my behavior than Carter's got liver pills. You know what I'm talking about, don't you? Don't you know how difficult it is to face yourself and to see who you really are? Who am I? What do I need to do to make changes in my life so that I can be a better follower of the Lord Jesus Christ? David had a difficulty with that. And so in one of the Psalms, I assume David is the author, said, O oh Lord, 
see, see, O oh Lord, if there is any wicked way in me. Why did he do that? He did that because it's difficult to see within and to see the changes that we really need to make. And as long as we keep denying, we're not going to do anything. We'll continue to go on just as we are each and every day. That is a very difficult thing to do to conquer ourselves. We can conquer outer space, but what about inner space? That's difficult. It is for me anyway. It's difficult. You know, back to my parable. The man is thinking he's got to change his wife so he could have a good marriage. What about him? Oh, well, we'll go on with that. <laughs> oh, there's nothing wrong with me. It's you. There's not, there's not a th I've heard that over and over again in these veterans that are here. They know it. They know it. When you get back from the war zone, there's nothing wrong with you. It's everybody else. It's all screwed up. That's what PTSD does to folks. Puts us in the realm of denial. And until you come out of that, there's not much hope for healing. Do you want to get well? Is the question. Do you want to get well? Here's the beautiful part of it, I think. Sure, the man wanted to get well. But look what happened. As long as he was trying to get to that pool of water, in my language it's water, and it's easier for me to say water than water. 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 It's, it's, he wanted to get into the water, especially when it began to boil. But he couldn't get there. Jesus asked him, you want to get well? And the man said, I can't get down there to get in the water. He was thinking, if I can get into that pool of water, I will be well. Oh, but he met. He met the creator of the water. Yes. He met the creator who could heal him. And Jesus said to him, get up, take your mat, and walk. There must have been something about that voice. In one passage in the New Testament, the writer says, Jesus didn't speak as other people did. He spoke with authority. There must have been something compassionate and authoritative about that voice that struck that man. And when Jesus said, get up, take your mat and walk, I'm not going to go into the details of the Greek syntax of the New Testament language, but that verse that Jesus was using indicated that he has got to do something himself to be healed. And what was that? Attempt to get up. Attempt to walk. And he did. Scripture says and he was instantly Healed. We all have a part in our own healing. We all have a responsibility to do something, whatever it takes, to heal, relying on God to help us. We cannot do it alone effectively. We can ask God to help us. The Apostle Paul said, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And I know some may say to me, you know, Pastor uh, Henry, you know what? 
I got this infirmity and I prayed and prayed and God doesn't heal me. What about that? Well, what about it? You know, I don't know why God don't heal everybody from their illnesses, from their cancer. I've prayed for healing. I've prayed for healing for my wife, my son. i prayed for healing for other people and yet nothing. But I keep doing it. I don't give up. And I'm not going to give up. The old devil's not going to cause me to give up. I got a 30-30 and I'm going to shoot him in the head if I get to see him. <laughs> it's a devil. Anyway, I'm going to tell you, don't quit. You may not see any progress. Don't stop praying about it. Jesus said men ought always to pray and not faint. People ought always to pray, not just men. But women too ought to always pray and never give up praying. Never. I believe that is part of the healing process. And if it doesn't happen, trust that God is a loving God. And he knows best. He knows best. Then some people will say, well, was this guy really healed? <laughs> Maybe he had enough, decided he had enough of strength and it just took that guy to, that guy to hear this kind of like a command and he just bounced up and finally got strength in his bones and legs and muscles or whatever and went on healing. You know, I don't know why we need to stop and question the healings of Jesus. I, I don't, you know, I, I know we can, we can do that. And that's all right. Here's what I do. When I confront that, the healings, the miracles that Jesus did, I run my eyes and mind to the resurrection. Yeah. And if God, if Jesus could be raised from the dead bodily, yes. bodily, yes. he got up and walked out of that tomb. Not only that, his body was changed to such a degree that he was not immediately recognized because he was a perfect human being. Ladies, I don't think there's going to be a saloon no, not saloon, no. what is it? Salon in heaven. You're not gonna need a salon. You're not, men, you're not gonna have to go to a barber shop. Men, when you see yourself in the mirror today and you look at yourself, look, hey, hey man, you're gonna be changed. That is if you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and his work, that's gonna happen. And if you lost all your hair, I don't know, maybe you won't get it back because maybe you look better without the hair. I don't know, but maybe you get your full head of hair back. I don't understand why we have so much difficulty with the miracles of Jesus in light of the resurrection. I was talking to a Catholic priest about that one day, and he said, yeah, sure, if he can do that, he can do anything. That's, right. That's what I think. Jesus said nothing is impossible with God. With man, yes, but not with God. So, this is a good question. Do you really want to make changes in your life? That's a question only you can answer. Here's the deal. The Lord Jesus is willing to help you change. But his question is, to each of us, do you want to change? Do you really want to change? Maybe we ought to ask that question of ourselves every day of the week. Maybe we should pray that God help us to do that so that we can appear as a better Christian 
and a better witness for the Lord of all creation. Let us pray. Father, we do pray that prayer because as you know, it is difficult for us to want to change. As with this man at the pool of Bethesda 2,000 years ago, he evidently wanted to change. But even if he had some little bitty doubt about it, he took action. And he began to stand, he began to walk, help us to take action and make attempts at least attempts to change ourselves into that which would please you, the Lord of glory. And thank you that you are so willing to help us that even when we feel weak and unable to do it, you step in and say to us, here am I. Trust me, live for me, believe in me. Help us to do that, Lord. In your most precious name we pray, amen. All right, let's stand and continue with our worship, all right? In song, or, okay, yeah, all right, yeah. 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 H-I-M? <laughs> okay. Thank you for that wonderful um, sermon. And uh, we're going to sing the last hymn here together. You guys ready? Be thou my vision, O Lord of my Oh, I see that's why the people are here. 